In this video, we're going to take a look at a blue ink by Roher and Klinger, Blue Mare. Now, as always, down below there's timestamps in the description so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also down in the description is a link to the Blue Ink playlist, so if you'd prefer a different blue, you can find that there. I'm an ink guy, let's get into the first writing sample on 90 GSM Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, some spots of shading like the BR in brown or the X in fox. 15 seconds to dry. Medium is dark like the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade, 25 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows some color variation and we do get it and the medium shows none where we had none. The smear test, I do think you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Pilot Custom 823 with a broad nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 23 seconds to dry. Medium is a little darker than the extra fine, just a little bit darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 37 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both shows no color variation because we're not getting any, and the smear test you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this pushes its way up and it's a very blue leaning turquoise in what we're seeing in the chromatography. And it pushes up and when it gets much more gathered at the top, it's when you see much more of its blue lean. But I see this as one ink one dye to make it. The one on the right is let dry for 10 minutes before it's dunked into water and we're seeing very much the same thing where it starts very light, works its way and as it's gathering at the top that's when it starts getting darker and starts showing more of that blue. Which is really the reason I'm thinking this is one dye to make this ink. Not expecting much resistance though. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, spots of shading like the B in brown, the K in quick, the H-E of the, 17 seconds to dry. Medium is dark like the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 28 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows some color variation, and we are getting it. I mean, you look at how much darker the is than over. The medium shows none where we had none, and the smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handles itself much better than I would have expected based on the chromatography. It does feel kind of safe to use in a note-taking situation just because here, all of that information is still there and fully readable. Now water is fully reactivating, lifting it. We're starting to see some of the white of the paper come through. It did only take water to get this out of my pen. Pen flush does nothing more than what water did, and the one-third bleach solution completely obliterates it. The next writing sample is done on yellow rhodia paper. This isn't done for any kind of performance change. It's really done just to see the tone changes we go through. And here we have much more of a blue on the white paper, but look out, it is definitely a turquoise on the yellow paper. Just something to be aware of if you're looking at using this 
in an office setting and you write on yellow paper where it might be a concern for you. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, with a realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Roher and Klinger's Blue Mare has a viscosity of 1.38, making it wet. If you're interested in how the viscosity tests are done and all of that, there's a link to that video down in the description. Now, let's take a look at the next writing sample done on Levenger paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, nine seconds to dry. Medium is just a tad darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen or shade and 16 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both shows no color variation. We're not getting it in the writing and the smear test. You could still recover it if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, with a realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Roher and Klinger's Blue Mare has an average dry time of 24 seconds, meaning it takes a pretty long time to dry, much more than normal. The last writing sample is done on P. Berger paper. Now there's no reason to go and circle and underline all of the bleed spots that are occurring here. There's a ton. It does not touch the page underneath, but you cannot use the back of the page. Although this is a French ruled paper and the back isn't ruled, so I don't think you would plan on doing it. There's good and bad to it. Doesn't corrupt the page underneath, so there's our good news. The 1.1 has a ton of feathering all over it. It's gross to look at. It's got no spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine has a ton of tiny feathering all over it. No spread, halo sheen, no shade, three seconds to dry, although I think this looks the best of all of them. The medium, which still doesn't look horrible, it's dark like the stub. It does have tiny feathering all over it. It does have some spread to about a broad. It has no halo sheen, no shade, four seconds to dry. I still think this is rather acceptable for a lot of people to use if they wanted to. The scrubby for both aren't really showing us any color variation. We're not getting it in the writing. In the smear test, you couldn't recover it here if you smeared while you were writing, which was surprising. Instead of finding inks that look like Roher and Klinger's Blue Mare, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a nice gray ink by Krishna, their pencil. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then there's a link to the, in a description to that playlist. Take a look there. So what do I think of Roher and Klinger's Blue Mare? This is a pleasant light blue that is never too light to read. It can be nice to have access to a light blue like this one. There is tone variation by pen and all of the tones are very nice to look at. So what nib and pen give the best writing experience with this ink? I do think that all of the tones that you get in the writing with all of the pens look very nice, but a medium flow fine has the ability to just give little spots of shading, which do bring an additional amount of character to its writing, at least in my opinion. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at Pen BBS number 233.